Some would say that the Emerson Rhino is unmatched and unparalleled in the knife world. And though others have tried to copy it, some like Reese Wyland, who would make his own uh, modifications of, of other Emersons into Rhinos, um, and there's some other Pimpers who do that as well. He's not the only one. But some people would take a Super Commander and, and cut a notch in the, in the uh, they would put a swedge with serrations, but being that it's a Super Commander, it would have, uh, it would have the recurve. Some would take the CQC-16 and turn it into a, a Rhino-type knife, or maybe the CQC-8, but there's another knife that matches uh, the Emerson Rhino in function and form, as well as date. At the exact same time that Ernest Emerson was making the Emerson Rhino, another knife maker was making a knife for the exact same purpose. And that knife maker is Steve Ryan. And this knife is the Steve Ryan Rhino. Clearly there are differences between the two in, in handle shape, but that's to be expected. But what's interesting is that the blade shapes are remarkably similar. Now in my last video about the Emerson Rhino, which you should watch first before watching this one, I talked about uh, a member of the Usual Suspects Network who is a uh, quite, the, quite the historian when it comes to knives. And he has another story about the Emerson and Steve Ryan rhinos. I'll put these uh, two together while I uh, read this. He says, everyone knows the story of calculus being independently invented by both Newton and Leibniz contemporaneously at the end of the 17th century. What may be less known, though, is that two similar titans of the knife world had a similar experience. In the early, in the, excuse me, in the early 1990s, Ernie Emerson made a knife originally called the SSRT, Silent Sentry Removal Tool. It featured a thin, unswept blade that was sharpened on the top for use in the epon, epon, ooh, excuse me, eponymous manner. Oops, excuse me, there we go. Because he only made five of them, it was greatly sought after in its rarity. Later dubbed the Rhino, it has achieved widespread fame, but unbeknownst to each other, at the same time, underground genius Steve Ryan had made just two knives of an eerily similar design for the same purpose. Unnamed at its birth, it eventually became known as the Ryan Rhino, or sometimes one of the two since Steve decided never to make another after he learned of the SSRT's existence. Oops, excuse me. Emerson initially stated he'd never make any more of them, too specific a design, but relented under the unceasing pressure from collectors. Ryan has stood fast, so there are just two of his in the world. Amazingly, one of the Ryan Rhinos is now up for sale. I believe it has since been... Um, uh, sold actually and someone actually purchased it um, um, but the price belays its place in the pantheon of knives and um, then he goes on to show a picture of two and I I am lucky enough to have on on loan a Steve Ryan Rhino or has also been called one of the two let's take a look at uh, the owner told me that that's a extremely sticky lock at this knife. It has contour G10, much like the original uh, Emerson Rhino, which had contoured micarta. And it is beautiful. Look at that stair step in the, uh, in the contouring. Please focus, thank you. Looks like hex pivots, or hex screw um, body screws. <clears throat> Looks like a black G10 backspacer. Tip-up carry as opposed to the Emerson tip-down carry. Um, dome pivot. Actually, much like the uh, early Emersons have a dome pivot. And opening hole. And boy, is that smooth. But uh, It has B-blasted liners. Um, I assume they're titanium, however, I do not know for sure. 
and look again at that blade. You can see it has a more radius um, look on it, the Emerson blade. This one, it seems like no place is there a, uh, a flat portion compared to the uh, Ernest Emerson knife, which clearly has a flat portion and then a quick upswept portion. This one appears completely radius. <clears throat> And um, it has uh, equally spaced serrations all along the top there, compared to the Emerson Rhino, which has alternating uh, serrations. So we see uh, one deep, two short, and um, one deep again. And this is different from the um, production serrations that you'll see on a, cu on a custom Emerson or on an Emerson or a custom Emerson if you haven't put serrations on it. And uh, I believe that's specifically for the uh, the intended purpose of this knife. If you catch my drift, of course the Emerson uh, thumb disc compared to the Ryan uh, thumb. Uh, cut out thumb hole. Um, but yeah, these two knives are some of the rarest knives you'll find. Um, I thought the Emerson Rhino was, was rare, and then I heard the story about the Steve Ryan uh, Rhino. Um, and that is much, much more rare. Just look at these two knives, just beautiful. Um, if you're unfamiliar, if you haven't watched the other videos, both of these are on loan. I do not own either of these. Um, both on loan from different people, actually. And I, I'm fortunate enough to be uh, to be friends with these individuals who will uh, lend me their knives for video. Um, both of these knives um, are chisel grind, chisel ground, and zero ground. Actually, if, this is interesting. Uh, an interesting perspective, you can see the buff line on the Steve Ryan compared to um, the smaller buff line on the Emerson here. I'll, I'll do a closer look at this way. See that extra polished portion near the edges? That's what's called the buff line. And it's um, called this because of the way the knife is sharpened with a buff wheel. You guessed it. Old School Emerson's had uh, a similar looking buff wheel and, and I'm sure that the Rhinos had the uh, the buff line, uh, the Emerson Rhinos from the back in the early 90s and mid 90s had the same buff line, but this Emerson Rhino that I have on loan is from uh, the 2000s where he changed uh, his, his buff wheel so that the buff line is much, much smaller. But no doubt these two knives are um, a class all their own as far as rarity and as far as function. These two knives are, uh, well, they're not utility knives, that's for sure. And if you ever get a chance to handle one of these knives, or gosh, if you have the opportunity to buy one of these knives, um, you'd be foolish to, to deny uh, yourself the opportunity on either account. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If there's any questions or comments, let me know. Uh, I could do a quick video if you want me to, but I will not be having these knives very long. Um, they are beautiful though, aren't they? I always say it, but this, team, this time it seems more uh, appropriate. Be dressed to play and geared to slaughter. See ya.